Hey, today I'm going to show you how you can fabricate a PCB at home and I will compare the results of a professionally manufactured PCB. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, the largest prototype PCB manufacturer in China, which offers good quality PCBs at a very attractive price. You can get 5 10 by 10 cm AA PCBs for only $2 plus shipping, no matter which of the six solar mask colors you choose. I made this PCB like two years ago and some days later I found out about JLC PCB and decided to give it a try because it was cheap and I had never ordered any PCBs before. If you want to follow the steps, you will need a printer, a transparency sheet, a copper clad and some way to cut it, clean it and drill it if your design has through all parts, dry film, also known as photoresist. As the name implies, it is a photoresistive film and when exposed to UV light, it becomes hard, while the unexposed areas remain soft and can easily be removed, as you will see. UV source like a nail UV lamp, UV LEDs, and yes, you can even use the sun if you don't mind waiting. A laminator or clothes iron to stick the dry film to the board, sodium carbonate, also known as soda ash, you can buy this as pH increaser for pools at most hardware stores. Hydrogen peroxide, hydrochloric acid, also known as muriatic acid, you can buy it at a hardware store. Acetone, preferably pure from the hardware store, but cheap nail varnish remover also kinda works. Containers and something to mix the solutions, rubber gloves, a little kitten, just keep it far away from the chemicals. You also need some other bits and pieces, but you probably already have them at home. First I cut the 1.6mm single sided copper clad to the size of my design. I used a scalpel and a metal ruler. I've since discovered that an acrylic cutting knife works a lot better for this. Apparently it is called a pea cutter? Basically you score the board a few times and then you align said score on the edge of a table and bend it and you get a reasonably clean cut. Listen. Oh, this makes me hungry. You can use a file to give it a final touch. I then clean the copper clad with some of this abrasive fabric, mostly known as scotch bright. You can also use steel wool. I cut a piece of dry film slightly larger than the board. You can use a box cutter or scissors. I removed the back protective film with the help of two pieces of tape that I pulled apart. I placed the board over a sheet of paper. I then applied the dry film to the board with a squeegee, making sure not to trap any air bubbles. and pass it through a cheap heated laminator. A laminator is a machine that has two silicon cylinders inside that are heated and is used to laminate paper inside a plastic pouch. In this case I am using it to force the dry film to stick to the board. If you don't have a laminator, you can use a closed iron at low temperature. Then I place the transparency that I printed earlier over the board and secured it with tape. This print needs to be a negative of your design, meaning that the clear parts are the ones where the copper will stay and the black are the ones that will get etched away. Some people print the design two times and overlap the sheets to get maximum opacity. In my case, I only use one with good results. You should inspect your print. If there are any lines that the printer did not cover, you can fix those with a black permanent marker. I found that having the printed side directly facing the board gives better results, so you might need to mirror the design before printing it. I modified the salt scanner so I could use it as an UV exposure device. I just took a nail gel UV dryer lamp, removed all the bulbs on the circuit board and placed them inside the scanner with a sheet of white material underneath the bulbs and a diffuser on the glass. 
I got both out of a broken LCD. Obviously, you do not need to go to such extent and you can simply use the nail machine as is or any other powerful UV source. As said before, you can even use the sun as long as you don't mind waiting a bit more. Now this is a sped up clip, but I exposed the board to the UV for 2 minutes, which conveniently is the original timer from the nail lamp and happens to be exactly the right exposure time for my setup. I prepared the solution to remove the uncured dry film by adding sodium carbonate to water. The correct ratio should be 1 part sodium carbonate to 100 of water. I removed the transparency and the paper which was a bit stuck because the board had glue residue from the price label. Don't forget to take off the top protective film. You can do so with tweezers, but you can also use the tape method as shown earlier. I now dunked it in the solution. If you can do telekinesis, you might just stare at it. Unfortunately, it did not work for me, so I used my fingers instead and the toothbrush. Don't be shy, it isn't as fragile as it seems and... I think she even likes it. Such a naughty board. This part of the process removes the dry gel on the parts that were not exposed to the UV. So everywhere you want the copper to stay needs to have the dry film intact. At the end inspect the results for any defects. If you find some and can't fix them you can always remove the dry film with acetone as shown later in this video and start over. Now this is the actual etching process. There are several etching solutions that you can find. But by far the most easy to get is muriatic acid and hydrogen peroxide at a ratio of 2 parts hydrogen peroxide to 1 muriatic acid. Make sure to add the acid to the hydrogen peroxide and not the other way around. Also this should be done in a well ventilated area as there are some nasty vapors released at first. Do not forget the gloves, eye and respiratory protection. Hearing protection might also be required if squeaky females are around. What This takes about 5 minutes. I like to shake the board around as it seems to help. Sometimes I even caress it with a q-tip until all the copper is gone. As you can see all the copper is gone except under the dry film which we are going to remove now. To do so I need acetone. I don't recommend using cheap nail varnish remover but instead get a proper pure acetone from the hardware store as the dry film should come right off by itself in just a few seconds. Be careful not to spill it. Oh, yeah, too late. So it actually works with this cheap stuff, you just need to be a bit more patient and help it out a little. I borrowed this painting that my mom had on the Mixed wall and used it as a base to drill the holes with my Dremel. I used some scrap boards to hold the PCB in place, but you can just use double sided tape or anything else as long as it prevents it from slipping. These are the drill bits I use, they are very cheap and work great. I use the flexible shaft for my knockoff Dremel, as it is easier than just using the actual Dremel by itself. But as you can probably tell, you still need a steady hand. I guess this would be a lot easier with a Dremel press. Oh, much straight. <laughs> Very nice. No worries, it still works. If you want you can stop right here as you have a usable PCB, but I like to give it a sort of a solder mask. How you ask? Easy. I print the pads on another transparency, apply dry gel to the board, expose it with said transparency and remove the unexposed parts once again with the sodium carbonate solution. At the end I like to expose it to the UV a final time so the dry film gets really hard. Just keep in mind that this is not a proper solder mask and if heated too much while soldering it turns kinda ugly. Now comparing the two processes while making a PCB at home takes some time and effort, ordering online is a lot simpler and gets you professionally looking boards 
with aligned holes and proper solder mask and silk screen. Talking of which, there are also ways to make the silk screen at home with dry gel and crayons. Yes, no joke. But I'm not going to explain it as I never tried myself and I don't think anyone that values his time would go to such extent. Also, this process would be a lot harder and more time consuming if you needed a double layer board, not to mention multi layer boards, which would be pretty much impossible. If you look closely, you can also see that the pads on the JLC PCP board are tinned, so they do not oxidize over time, unlike my PCP, which just has the copper exposed to the environment. You can, of course, tin the pads with the soldering iron or with liquid tin, which works like magic. But then again, in most cases you are going to just solder the components on the pads, so you do not need to worry about this. So unless I urgently need a PCB in the future, this was possibly my last homemade one, as it is just easier to order them online. You get perfect looking boards, and nowadays it is even cheaper than making them at home, especially if you value your time. Let me know in the comments if you ever etched a board at home, and if you made your mama proud. You can find purchase links for most of the tools that I use in the description. Have fun! I modified this old scanner so I could use it as an o o o <laughs> <laughs>